I'm Ann Carmichael, a student financial aid consultant with LELA, and my job is to make sure that you understand the student financial aid process and help you with your FAFSA if you need assistance. As I'm sure your counselor has already told you, the Louisiana Department of Education asks that the class of 2021 submit the free application for federal student aid as a requirement for graduation. And this simply ensures that your money is ready and waiting for you when you begin college this fall. Now, because college can be expensive, it's time to start thinking about those expenses and preparing for them. And they include your equipment, books and supplies, your personal expenses, room and board, and tuition and fees. But the good news is that financial aid is available from the U.S. Department of Education, the state of Louisiana, your college or career school, and nonprofit and private organizations. Every year, the federal government provides more than $120 billion in student financial aid, and we want to make sure that you are receiving your portion. Types of federal student aid include the federal Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, Federal Work Study, and direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and PLUS loans. Federal student aid grants are a form of financial aid that does not have to be repaid. And those grants include the Pell Grant for undergraduates with financial need, FSEOGs for undergraduates with exceptional financial need, service grants for students of military parents who died defending the country following 9-11, and TEACH grants for students pursuing a teaching career. The Federal Work Study Program provides part-time jobs to help pay for your education expenses. So select yes on the FAFSA because it will not obligate you to accept any jobs offered, but it will let the financial aid office know that you are interested in being considered for work on campus. Your earnings in these jobs will be paid directly to you, the student, and should be paid uh, and should be used to pay for your college expenses. And these look great on your first professional resume. Now, direct subsidized loans are based on financial need and no interest is charged until you graduate or cease to attend. On the other hand, almost everyone is eligible for direct unsubsidized loans, regardless of financial need. However, the interest does begin to accrue on those loans once they're fully dispersed. So you can see that there is a big difference between direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Always accept the subsidized loan portion first, and you can um, remind yourself of this by telling yourself that the U in unsubsidized means that you always pay the interest. If you are offered loans, accept the federal student loans first because payments aren't due until you graduate or cease to attend. The interest rate is fixed at a lower rate and no credit check is required. Private loans should be accepted only as needed because most require payments be made while you're still in school. The interest rate might be variable and often it's much higher and they almost always require a cosigner. So do your research before accepting any private loans. To dispel the myth, almost everyone is eligible for some type of federal student aid. And all federal student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon completion of the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA, which launched on October 1st. Now it does so every October 1st, and remember you must submit a FAFSA every year you're going to be in college. And the money is offered on a first come first serve basis. So submit your FAFSA as soon as possible. 
because we've already been alerted that over 1 million FAFSAs have been submitted for this next academic year. So get to the head of the line while the money is still available so you'll be offered your maximum award that you're eligible to receive. And remember to pay close attention to and meet the FAFSA deadline set forth by your college, the state, federal student aid, and perhaps your school has a FAFSA deadline. Begin the FAFSA process by collecting all of the documents that you're going to need to complete the form. And if you do so, it should take no longer than 30 or 40 minutes to complete. Those documents include the student and parent's social security cards, the student and parent's 2019 federal income tax returns, if they filed, your W-2s, because there's information on this form that might not be found on the tax return, and then bank statements and records of investments, because you must report the balances of these accounts as of the date you submit the FAFSA. Now begin by creating the Federal Student Aid ID, because this allows the student and parents to identify themselves electronically when accessing all federal student aid websites, such as the FAFSA. The ID consists of a, user, a unique username and password that you will create and should reflect only your personal information. Each student and one of his parents should create an ID by visiting fsaid.ed.gov. Now students, if you don't already have a personal email address, now is the time to create one. Once school is out, um, the, you may not have access to your school email account, um, and Federal Student Aid will have no way to get in touch with you. So use only your personal email and your personal mobile phone number. Don't share your information with someone else. Don't use mom or dad's mobile phone as your alternate phone. If you don't have two phones, leave that alternate phone number blank. Now your username and password is your official electronic signature and it's legally binding. So make sure that you're recording it and keep it in a safe place. You're going to need it at a later time. And every year that you're in college, you're going to have to use your FSA ID. If you don't have access to a computer when you're ready to begin, you can always download the FAFSA mobile app. It's called My Student A, and you can use it to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone or any mobile device that has internet access. Or if you prefer, you can complete the FAFSA using the web-based version at fafsa.gov. Now, if the student wants to begin the FAFSA on his mobile device and the parent wants to use the web-based version, that's fine. Everything will be integrated when it's time to sign and submit the FAFSA. Begin the FAFSA by logging in with the student's FSA ID because the FAFSA is the student's application for federal student aid. The parent FSA ID is going to be used later in the form to transfer your tax information from the IRS into the FAFSA if you choose to. And then again, to sign the student's FAFSA. The high school class of 2021 should complete the 2021-2022 FAFSA because that's the academic year that you're applying for financial aid. Now, you'll see two um, different versions, but the 2020 2021 FAFSA is for students who are in college this academic year. Once you're in the form itself, you're going to see that there are eight sections that should be completed before submitting the FAFSA. And those include the student demographic section where the student will be asked to report the social security number, name, date of birth, personal email address, home address, residency status and gender, in the school selection, you'll report the name of your high school, any colleges that you want your FAFSA data to be sent to, and your housing plans on each of those campuses. You'll then move to the dependency status section where you'll be asked to consider a list of 10 questions 
that will determine your dependency status. And I'm going to go over those 10 questions in just a moment. You'll be asked to report the number of dependents living in your household and then your parents' education. And often parents will ask why they're being asked what their education level is. But it's important to note that there could be additional free money for students that are first generation college students. You'll then move to the parent demographics where parents will be asked to report their social security numbers, their names, marital status, um, and their personal email addresses. Then the parent and student financials, where you will each be asked to report your working wages from 2019, any federal benefits that you receive, and the balances of your savings and investment accounts. Then it's time to sign and submit the FAFSA. Once you do, you'll receive confirmation. Now, when, as you're moving through the FAFSA, if you have a question about a question, Look over to the right hand side, you'll see a question mark. Click on the question mark for a more detailed description. You're going to find hyperlinks within the um, FAFSA um, for definitions, legal terms, and uh, financial aid terms. Uh, if you need um, more clarification on those topics, you can request a FAFSA online chat. You can call Federal Student Aid with your questions or you can contact me at Leela's FAFSA Helpline. But for this session, I'm gonna cover only the most commonly asked FAFSA questions. We'll start with the citizenship requirement because citizen students must be a citizen or an eligible non-citizen to complete a FAFSA. If you're not sure what an eligible non-citizen is, this is one of the hyperlinks. Click here for a more detailed description. Now, if you are a citizen or an eligible non-citizen and you've determined that, but your parents are not, they will, they will just enter zeros anywhere a social security number is asked for. Then the student can go ahead and submit the FAFSA. Young men between the ages of 18 and 26 must be registered with Selective Service to receive federal student aid. So if that's your choice, um, and you haven't already registered, you can register within the FAFSA. If you're not 18 yet, that's okay. Just click the box that says register me. And when you turn 18, you'll be registered and that will save you a trip over to the Selective Service website. Only the colleges that you list on your FAFSA are going to consider you for financial aid. So make sure you're adding all of the colleges that you're considering. And you can do uh, so 10 at a time. If you are planning to apply to more than 10 colleges, there are instructions on this page to help you move through that process. Or you can call us at Layla's FAFSA Helpline. I'll be happy to walk you through it. Now we'll move into the 10 questions that are going to determine whether the student is dependent upon his parents or independent of his parents for FAFSA purposes. Will you be 24 or older by January 1st of the school year for which you're applying for financial aid? And remember, these questions are being asked of the student. Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree? Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than children or a spouse who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Are you currently serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for purposes other than training? So if you're headed to the military, once you graduate from high school, Boot camp and basic training is considered training and you're still dependent. Are you a veteran of the US Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care or were you a ward or dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? Now, these are hyperlinks within the FAFSA if you're not quite sure what those terms mean, but it's important for you to know that legal custody 
is not always considered legal guardianship. So make sure you have your, doc your documents with you before you answer that question. Are you an unaccompanied youth who is homeless? Or are you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? If you can answer yes to just one of these questions and provide a legal document supporting your claim, then you're considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes, and you will not be asked to provide parental information. Now for FAFSA purposes, just because you live alone and support yourself and you file your own taxes, you are still considered dependent unless you can answer one of the prior 10 questions. And then the number one question that we're asked, which parents do I report on my FAFSA? The rule of thumb is that the parent or parents that you've lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. So if you live with both of your biological parents, then that's easy. Just list both of them. But if the parent that you lived with the longest in the past 12 months is either separated, divorced, or was never married, you should list that parent only on your FAFSA. However, if that parent is now remarried, then you must include your step parent as well. In other words, federal student aid wants to know the financial standing of the household that the student has lived in the longest in the 12 months prior to the date that the FAFSA was submitted. If you're identified as a dependent student, but your parents refuse to provide information on your FAFSA, you can submit a FAFSA stating that you're unable to provide their information, but you must contact the financial aid office once you submit so that they can begin to work with you independently to help you get that information. They will be the ones that are determining your financial aid offer. So don't hesitate, give them a call um, because if you don't, you're only going to be considered for federal student loans. To make the FAFSA process go a lot smoother, please use the Internal Revenue Services Data Retrieval Tool. This will help you um, link over to the IRS site, grab your tax information, and drop it directly into your FAFSA. Not only is it going to ensure that it's accurate, you a student is probably going to, um, this is going to diminish their chances of being selected for verification on that college campus. So uh, grab your 2019 income tax return. Whatever's listed on that return has to be listed here in the IRS site, even if your name is misspelled or you've moved since the date that your 2019 return was filed. You must report information exactly as printed on that return. And then you're almost finished. But before you submit your FAFSA, please review your student aid report. It's a list of all of the questions you were asked and your answer to each of those questions. And by correcting any mistakes now, this just ensures that the financial aid office can quickly process your student financial aid. The student and one parent will be asked to electronically sign the FAFSAs with their FSA IDs. Now, if you submit without your FAFSA, your um, signatures, your FAFSA is going to be considered incomplete. And you're going to have to go back in at a later date and sign and submit your FAFSA again. Once you do submit, you'll see this confirmation pop-up page. And although the student is going to receive an email from federal student aid, letting him know that the FAFSA was submitted, this is the only time you're going to get this much detailed information. You're going to receive a confirmation number with the date and time that you submitted. You'll receive a data release number so that if you want the financial aid office to make changes to your FAFSA from their offices, they can do so with that number. You can see what happens next and the steps you need to take to complete this process. A list of your colleges are, lists are here reported on this page. And then you can review your 
financial aid estimates. And I'm gonna stress the word estimate because everybody gets excited when they see the dollar amounts, but this information must be verified by the financial aid office before they provide you with a financial aid offer. If you begin a FAFSA and you need to go gather more information before you submit it, remember that you have 45 days to do so or your information is gonna be wiped off the system and you'll be starting again. You will receive reminders from federal student aid to go back in and complete the process. Now say you want to add a school later or you wanna change your contact information or um, your college has asked you to make some changes to your FAFSA. Simply log back into the FAFSA, it's the simplest way, and use the student's FSA ID. Um, make your changes and sign and submit your FAFSA again. So you can change your FAFSA as many times as you need to to make sure that it's correct, but always sign and submit. Once your FAFSA is fully processed, which takes about three to five days, at that time it's shared with your colleges listed. Then each college financial aid office will begin to identify any aid that you might be eligible to receive. Now, if your family's financial situation has changed since 2019, contact your financial aid offices because they have the ability to adjust your aid by using their own professional judgment. We know this is going to happen all over the country this year, uh, but especially in Louisiana with all of the hurricanes that have ripped through our state. So say that your parents have lost uh, jobs or there's been a reduction um, in income. Perhaps there have been some unexpected medical expenses incurred. The financial aid office is a great resource to identify any additional free money that might be available to help you complete your academic year. Because they are working to determine your net price. Um, they're going to do this by taking any grants and scholarships that you might be eligible for, subtracting that from the cost of attendance at their college, and that will be your net price. Now, the net price is your responsibility to pay either in cash or by accepting student loans. Your financial aid offer should reflect each college's cost of attendance and grants, scholarships, work study, and student loans that they have to offer you. So read through it carefully and respond to any of their requests so that they can process your aid. Remember that you're going to receive a separate financial aid offer from each of the schools that you've listed on the FAFSA. And a lot of them are going to wait until they receive your admissions application to offer you that aid. So make sure you're getting those applications completed as well. Because once you determine which school you're going to, you want to accept your aid in this order. Scholarships and grants, because this is gift aid that doesn't have to be repaid. Next is federal work study because you've earned this money and you don't have to pay it back. And then last, your student loans because this is borrowed money that must be repaid with interest. This is a lot of information to absorb. So Leela has published a FAFSA completion guide for the class of 2021 and it's free for all Louisiana high school seniors. So if you haven't already received one from your counselor, please shoot me an email. I'll be happy to send you a copy and I'll include Leela's senior checklist to help you stay on track this year. Now, let me just cover scholarships for one minute. These are gifts that do not have to be repaid and they are out there. There are thousands of them that are offered by the colleges, your parents, employers, community, uh, religious organizations. Some are based on your academic achievement and others are based on financial need. A scholarship could cover the entire cost of your tuition or it could be a one-time award 
Um, so it's worth applying for them because if you do apply and receive them, it's going to reduce the cost of your education. And bottom line, that means that it's going to reduce your student loan debt. So talk to your high school counselor, contact your college financial aid office and your admissions recruiters for some ideas on scholarships that they've heard about. This year, Leela offers a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors attending a Louisiana high school. All you have to do is complete your FAFSA um, and go to our website to get the application. Once you're in college, you can apply for our $1,000 Choose Louisiana scholarship if you're going to a Louisiana college because we want to keep you here in the state. So go to Leela.org for the details on these offers and also for the applications. Now, if you're going to a pricier college and you've exhausted all your opportunities for grants, scholarships, federal and state dollars, Leela does administer a nonprofit education loan program. And you can find out more about that at leelachoice.org. I am always here to answer your questions, so please feel free to contact me at any time. You can call our FAFSA helpline, and the number is listed here, and you can email me if you prefer, um, and if you want a copy of that FAFSA completion guide. It was a pleasure to present, and I'm look looking forward to receiving your FAFSA completion scholarship applications. If you want to take another look at this presentation, I'm going to post it on our YouTube channel. It's called Ask Leela. I'm also going to provide it to your counselor so she can send it out to those of you who were not able to participate this evening. Thanks again for having me and have a great senior year.